Hello and welcome to your favorite YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. And before we begin, I have a couple of things to remind everybody of. It is Cartoonist Kayfabe Tober, and this is our list of prompts. If you're unfamiliar with Kayfabe Tober, it is a list of prompts, one for each day of something for you to draw out there. If you take on the Cartoonist Kayfabe Tober challenge, we want you to make sure tag us in your post of your pictures. We have a very creative audience. We've already seen a bunch of these beautiful drawings, so make sure you tag us so that uh, other people can find your work as well. I also want to remind everybody we have Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon. There are three different levels that will get you access to our videos early, and at the King Kayfaber level, you will get all of our videos first because you are sitting in on the recording session. This gives you a leg up on the kayfabe effect. If we show something off that you want to add to your collection, you'll be the first one looking for it. If it's rare, if it's hard to find, you'll get it before it disappears or before it goes up in value. So check out the Patreon, see what level works for you. And finally, we are a daily comic book YouTube channel. We have 1,500 videos featuring all sorts of comics and creators. You can check those out on the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube homepage. Find your favorite titles there. All right, Ed, today we are looking at Gaijin taking their turn with Akira. These are the epic issues of Akira, the last two issues, 37 and 38, and they feature backup material by a wide range of creators. Kind of hard books to find, but I got hold of these not too long ago, and we figured, hey, let's show off some Alex Toth version of Akira and, uh, and a whole assortment of others. So we're going to be focusing on the back matter of these two issues in this video and... With actual comics, too, uh, which, is, which is pretty rad, man. You, you got a, a Mark Texiera story. How about that? Some beautiful Mark Texiera fully painted artwork. Yeah. Might just, be as good as he gets as a painter. Absolutely. And and you never see him do kind of re regular humans, right? It's always these like bombastic, muscled yes. figures and stuff. So seeing him tackle this is great. And these are kind of like uh, satellite stories. Uh, Joe Duffy, I think she was principal She's translator. A I don't know if she does translation or if she does sort of adaptation for right. the translation, but yes, her name on all of these books From is the English script. So definitely somebody is very close to this material. And you can imagine it's emotional, man. I don't know when this starts serializing, but I think this is 1995 when it finally finishes up. So you've got five, six, seven years working on this title. Probably knows these characters well and, and probably had some fun writing some of this back matter. These, these, and uh, Kent Williams is, is our other uh, contributor, and I think this is the only contribution. It's not like a big pinup by him. Right. Uh, you know, these are satellite comics, so so it's just uh, characters are kind of adjacent to uh, the, the kind of main story, you know, kind of... This is what's happening uh, while you know all the other stuff is going on, uh, kind of kind of off camera. So this is a school story. This is Yamagata. He's the he's the dude that catches a bullet and uh, die, dies pretty early. Yeah, and it's beautiful. You can see these references. I think this may be an actual painted version of an Otomo panel. Yeah. So it's kind of neat to see that stuff come in and out. You know, it's kind of a cool way to do ancillary material like this because it really feels like it's in the world. Yeah, Mark Tex is a uh, he's a continuity studios guy, and uh, you'll you'll hear Neil Adams talk about you know when when Mark Texiera settles down and really gets into it, like like he's he's you know better better than anybody, and you see him using those kind of chops, you know, so like. With continuity, photo reference is is a thing. Like you know, capture all details correctly, and you know he's, he accomplishes it well. Great lighting, and this is uh, before there's going to be a showdown between all the street gangs, Tetsuo with the clowns, and then everybody else kind of organizing against them. Totally, and uh, this is just set up for that. Yeah, this is the gym teacher that smacks them all in the face, who is based on Antonio Inoki. Oh, I didn't realize that. You can see the big chin right here. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. How about, how has that never come up in our conversations, Ed? It has. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I didn't reference. Maybe I didn't catch the reference. But uh, it's very clear in some of these panels. And it's a goofy story. Like, I seeing this, I was like, oh, it's Canada, but it's not. It's still that gym teacher, and he just kind of is a folly. Mm -hmm. for, for the whole comic. I mean, that's just what it is. You could kind of keep flipping and show off the cool artwork. By the way, this hand, I feel like you could do a zine of just that hand. Like, this is a shorthand version, no pun intended, of that hand reaching out. That's yeah. a very comic trope visually. Yeah. And you can see, like, each time it, he, he comes, the gym teacher comes in, something goes wrong. Trips something on, foils Trips him. on his whistle. Trips on a, a, a pen. I actually remember doing that as a kid, because, like, uh, there would be little tools and stuff, little, uh, 
uh, pens and pencils on the on the hallway floors and shit, and you you you'll go sliding a little bit. I thought you were uh, the one putting the pen down like a trap. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you are a victim of the pen on the floor. This is another piece. It, it, one of my one of my favorite Otomo drawings in the first volume of Akira, the first uh, Tankoban. It's it's the only time it's the first time I ever saw somebody draw a recoil, uh, and it's not really captured here. But uh, it's Kaneda, you know, shooting the gun that the guy is still holding, and the gun is up in the air, and then you see the muzzle flash like right about there, and it was just so such a smart observant drawing and and i stole that motif uh no less than two or three times in in uh the beats comic alone that i did with harvey picar whenever william s burroughs is playing mm -hmm. uh william tell with his old lady and shoots her in the jibs like i made sure to, to to use that piece that is a demented tetsuo like that tattoo looks so good yeah he is not right <laughs> yeah very true there's a subplot of the horse, horse uh, racing that they're betting on, and uh, we get a hot tip on this 150 to 1 odd that ends up paying off, and I think the implication is Tetsuo may be uh, influencing that race. Something is influencing that race. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's lost on me. I thought it was just it's, it's hard luck, like uh, you know, like of course Yamagata dies. He's 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 a no no win kind of fella, and then as soon as yeah, he, he finally wins and he can't, uh, I think it's as simple as that. Can't enjoy it. Um, Dave Gibbons here with the pin up in the back. It's funny how the credits are set up. You know, like I, I had that front page and it has Kent Williams, Tex, and Joe Duffy, and does not mention. Dave Gibbons, which seems like a pretty big oversight. The guy's huge in 1993, but I think this may be early digital work for him. You know, you can really see the digital coloring in the background. It's that era, and, you know. Uh, and he's talked about learning the digital around the early 90s, so yeah, it feels like that's some, some early work from him on the uh, computer side of things. Yeah, really no excuse, because I think these books took a long time yes. to, uh, c to come out. They were solicited for literally years, uh, maybe two years before they started to pop out, and I wonder like what is that lag? Uh, it, and and then I'm like, is is the lag really just the back matter stuff? You know, or the guy? Surely not. Or the, I would hope not. But then like, what is? It's like, you know, Steve Olaf has been coloring this stuff for years and years. You would think he would have a system set up to to color the the, the work, but then maybe it's licensing because the work was kind of coming out still while the uh, serializations. Of, of this epic stuff we're, we're going on. So maybe they kind of caught up to Otomo. Yeah, it's funny. I, I don't know the answer to that. It's a good question. So this is much more loaded. Yeah. You can see the, the people listed here. Mark Chiarello, which is this piece. Mobius, or Moibius. <laughs> Joe Mad, uh, George Pratt, Mike Allred, John Romita, Alex Toth, Kevin O'Neill, and John Van Fleet. So pretty big list here of, uh, of contributors for this particular issue. This video is brought to you by the books that we make. The best way to support Cartoonist Kayfabe is to buy our books. I have Street Angel, Princess of Poverty coming out in November. You need to pre-order that one now. It is part of a set with Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive, collecting all of my Street Angel comics. October 26th, I will be selling my self-published comics on jimrug.com. That includes True Crime Funnies, the BW zine, and the 1986 zine. And Hulk Grand Design, my contribution to the Grand Design mythos is sold out at the distribution level, so pick that one up if your comic shop still has a copy. Ed's Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus will be in stores in November. I recommend that you pre-order this one. Get your name on a copy because these are going very fast. X-Men Grand Design Trilogy Trade Paperback will be out in November collecting all three volumes of X-Men Grand Design by Ed Piscor. And Red Room, Anti-Social Network and Trigger Warnings are already out, and in January they will be joined by Crypto Killers. And now back to our video. And uh, Larry Hama, Brett Blevins, Steve Bucciolato doing uh, the color here. The comics creators not listed in that um, tribute. The tributes are just pinups, I guess. Yeah, man. Itatakimasu. That's the one word I know, man. You say that before your meals. Ah, gotcha. This is our... I forget her name, too, but she was like the big enforcer on the on the side of angels but i always liked her in the comics when we were doing the going through book by book you know what she cool. was just this badass and totally. she's sitting here eating whenever like a, a drone scout spots her there are parts uh certainly even i think on the on the tankoban covers where she's holding kind of the same guns that uh roadblock carries you know yeah. and larry hama is basically the creator of roadblock so i could see how he could gravitate to this character uh because 
it is kind of like treated as such. You know, this is this is an unstoppable force. Yeah, and a very um, kind of a, a short, simple story, right? This drone is the first thing, but what it's bringing is a tank, bringing the security forces. Right. And you see the tank coming down this alley, the guy that was sleeping in the background running away. It's almost like Jim Shooter uh, storytelling, you know, like 101 where you see the, the setups and uh, it all fits together very tightly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Larry Hama is... He's he's storytelling 101. And her gun jams. Which is the worst thing that can happen when you're in a gunfight with a tank. We're making a comic, man. You gotta have some complication. <laughs> yeah, so... Continuing to eat her yakitori skewer, by the way. Right. You know, she needs... The, these arms need protein. But we're gonna need that, that skewer. So finish up your meal here and let's use that skewer to uh, unjam the gun. It looks like she's packing. It does look like that. And the jam piece... <laughs> Yeah, she's a fucking badass, dude. It's cool seeing Brett Blevins stretch himself this way. Yeah, his art looks pretty good in here, I think. Even with, like, the screen tones and stuff, I feel like you're doing some stuff as an artist here to approximate looking at manga and yeah. thinking, like, what's there? I feel like that's some of the screen tone and just the detail of buildings everywhere. You know, it's an American version, but mm -hmm. it's still sort of, I think, drawing... Looking at your source material and drawing from it. By the way, if you want to watch humans fighting tanks in comics, I would recommend Joe Sacco's The Fixer. All right, so we get a couple of pinups in between the next story. This is uh, Mobius pinups. These pinups are kind of amazing. Like when you think of the, the range of artists that are contributing, uh, Joe Mad, pretty young Joe Mad, I, I assume here. And he's throwing out some Shiro and some, some stuff in the graffiti here, right? Referencing some of his, his manga heroes, no doubt. Otomo rules. Yeah. George Pratt, Mike Allred. Pretty good placement for Mike Allred early in his career. You know, he, if this was, was done in the early early nineties. Yeah, I think he was you know doing his Madman stuff mm -hmm, definitely. Uh, at, at that point. And but but it's still you know using the co kill and stuff. The only other real places I saw him do that would be like his uh, big fat kill pinups and maybe you know that early like caliber graphic music stuff. So he he gets rid of that pretty quickly. And it's fun to see him colored this way because I feel like the color goes back to that later when he's doing his collaborations with uh, J-Bone and doing that kind of cell, cell shaded looking stuff where the characters have a black line but the backgrounds are sans black line but this kind of color. Yeah, it's a neat piece. 1994, so he might have been hooked up with Legend by that point. Yeah. So definitely not a new new guy, but um, also I don't think he'd done much at Marvel or DC yet. John Romita offering a piece up probably towards the end of his tenure as art director at Marvel and um, interesting to see, like, a classic Marvel approach to the, to an Akira character. Yeah, man. Kind of cool. And uh, Alex Toth, of course. I think I have this reprinted in black and white in one of those Toth book collections somewhere. But, again, what a what a strange get. Yeah, uh, you know, probably speaks to Chiarello uh, make, making that happen, I, I would bet you. Makes and me wonder, too, was he given, like, a couple of these books? And if so, like, what on earth did he make of this stuff? Totally. This is a chilling piece. It's uh, great. I, 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 think, I think it would work better in pure black and white. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, it, it would make it feel brighter, the, the light and the, and the sort of white heat of everything. It didn't need the color, but uh, it's, a, it's a chilling, chilling piece because it's so obviously a child. Isn't that fascinating? Like, his, his ability? Like, it's so obviously a child. Probably the size of the head helps. Right. And, uh, you know, this is beyond that episode of Twilight Zone where the kid turns his parents into a jack-in-a-box or whatever. It's like this kid like, can destroy the whole world. Yeah, any chance to, uh, to see some Toth I'm always going to be happy with, and it's cool to see it in this context. You know, especially seeing, like, other people interpret Akira and what they come up with. Um, Kevin O'Neill leaning into the, uh, the monstrous side of this, maybe the kaiju side of Akira. Makes sense, right? Totally. Still great, though, with his design. This is another piece where, honestly, I'd be curious to see this one in black and white. There's a lot of color applied on this page, but you can see he is spotting some black here in these, like, foreground elements. So, great artist. And then John Van Fleet, and I would not have uh, recognized that for him. I like his art. He did that Typhoid Mary series. It's probably my favorite of his. This is a little bit out there. The color palette's kind of in line with what I see with him. He does a lot of those browns and, and reds. Um, but otherwise, just photo collage. Yeah. All right, we've got one more comics story here. 
uh, Warren Ellis, your writer, Terry Shoemaker art, and Brian Bucciolato again on the uh, color. This is this is wild Terry Shoemaker art because I, from what I remember of Shoemaker from the stuff that I've seen in the past, it was it was a uh, very kind of esoteric style. It was, it was very wild style, and this is firmly rooted in the Wild Storm kind of Jim Lee school of things, and uh, the writing that Ellis does. There's some clever stuff early, but then it becomes so on the nose that it makes me think that the editors had a hand in that, to be honest, because it's so on the nose. Like, the, this, the whole motif of candy, and one kid ate the most candy, like, that's reasonably clever as far as, you know, mainstream comics goes, because we know what Akira is, and we know that the, the importance of the pill and all that, but then they're just going to spell that out later. And that's whack. Right. That's corny as fuck. Uh, but we got, once again, man, he's like, child espers is the scariest thing ever, man. There is a movie, oh my goodness, so maybe it's called The Innocents. It, it's a it's like a um, foreign movie, Scandinavian film, pr pretty sure. But it's basically Domu. It's Domu. Almost part and parcel like the whole thing with the exception of replace the old man with another kid yeah which makes a lot of sense right but it has a lot of set pieces and stuff like exactly from domu it ends in the in the same way and it's so effective it's a it's a fairly newish movie within the past five years man i want to see it now oh it's great it sounds awesome yeah i feel like shoemaker does pretty good work here yeah, it's just so crazy. Like, whenever the mandate comes that the, the money-making way to draw is the Jim Lee way, to see these guys kind of, like, really sell out their own styles, uh, it's 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 a sad thing to me. It is sad. It becomes like this, um, wow, it's like the last Marvel House style. Yeah. And it's it's weird. You know, it's kind of a novelty. Like, I enjoy it because it's a novelty, but as a thing of, like, this is what our company is now. Yeah. Because, because, Not so much. Yeah, because the artists, they become caricatures of themselves. And, and when, like, Herb Trimpey, who's done something for so long, but, but you know, he was working in a house style. I, I talked to him three weeks before he passed, maybe. And I told him all of my favorite things of, of, that he's done. And I mentioned the Rolling Stone cover. He's like, that's that's my style. Like, that's really how I draw. And and I want to get back to to drawing the way that I draw. Uh, he's a guy who had to use that that style. Alex Saviuk has to fucking draw far apart cross, cross hatch and shit. And, you know, when he was doing a Romita or a Kirby-ish thing beforehand. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not a good look. And for your career, it's very short-sighted because... Because you're not going to lose work whenever this goes away. And then you're going to have to, like, have a learning curve and figure out the next uh, style du jour. You're going to have to learn to draw like Brian Hitch or Frank Quitely now. Do you remember what else Terry Shoemaker did? I think I've X seen Factor him on Comics, Spider-Man, I, I was going to say. Yeah, X-Factor, I remember that. Yeah, he, like, the, the, the X-Books... He didn't do a lot, though. Like, I can't think of a lot of stuff that he did. Yeah, you know, he might have only been there for a couple of years, and I mean, at 1995, like probably a lot of people are getting le leaving the business. I sometimes confuse him too with a uh, Bogdanov mm. because it, certainly in the style approach, but um, there would be like one odd Superman book or one odd X book, and it would be Shoemaker or Bogdanov would be, you know, either or the 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 kind of more wild style. In, in those families of books. Here's your heavy-handed uh, metaphor now of the candy. We see the pills dropping. Right. In place of the candy. And then and then it just becomes you know, like a like a kind of retelling of Yeah, I don't I don't know what you can do if you were doing an, a story set in the Akira universe. It's kind of such a tight story like you almost have to do something kind of I don't know, tiny in between. Yeah, sure, sure. I, I mean, there, there's, there's. I think there's plenty, and, and I think if we had the opportunity, like we would come up with some, some really, really cool stuff. This makes me wonder who Warren Ellis is at this time. Is it, you know, the guy who writes Doctor Strange, uh, Warren Ellis, in uh, ninety four, ninety five? Certainly before Transmetropolitan, and uh, Transmetropolitan is before Planetary and yeah, right. and the Stormwatch and and the things that really. Did he ever run on Excalibur in the like before? I feel like he did some Excalibur 
early on, but it may have been before this or maybe concurrent with this. Yeah, I don't know. It is interesting, these guys who, when you think of their career, it's it's totally different and after this. So figuring out who he is, I guess, at this stage and um, taking in some different stuff, you know, like you, you see this with a lot of the writers, especially, but I guess artists too, where their early work, it's almost like doesn't totally fit what you think of them, but you take what you get. Right. You know, like you're trying to get into the into the business. So whatever door opens is the one that you walk through and then you start to move towards the stuff that uh, maybe speaks to you a little bit more. But kind of cool. Um, I was going to throw this out to the K Fabers. I'm missing two issues from this run. So if anybody has a three and a thirty four that they don't want, send them to uh, send them to the P.O. box. But I'll probably track those down on my own. I'm not a completist, as everybody knows, but whenever you're two issues away from a 38-issue run, especially something like Akira. Yeah, and shout out to Lika Seki, because he, he sent these to us on like one of those crazy mail weeks yes. where uh, it was between uh, us, the stack of Akira or Brand, Brendan McCarthy's personal copy of Swim Any Purpose. So we did that flip, and, uh, and I, I won the flip. And I felt like it was important to have Brent, Brendan McCarthy's copy. Yeah. But I still think of these Akiras all the time. Yeah, they're cool. Like, that was that was a real Sophie's choice. <laughs> uh, that, that, As it so often is. That, that flip, man. All right. Good to go? I am. Okay, Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available. Cartoonist Kayfabe-tober is upon us, 2023. These are your drawing prompts. Make sure that you tag us, add us, make sure that we see these uh, pieces that you put together so that we can share those with our audience at large. Boost your numbers, get get your name out, and uh, it's always a pleasure to see what you guys come up with. We are a daily YouTube channel, and uh, with more than 1,500 videos in our filmography at this point, some stuff might have slipped your radar, and we might have talked about your favorite comics. Give the channel a search for your favorite titles, check out those episodes, and if we did not cover your favorite comics, put something in the comments, let us know what those comics are. We could push those comics a little bit higher on our to-read piles. The uh, videos are supported by the King K Fabers on our Patreon. They get access to all the videos before anybody else. They're hanging out with us right now in a live stream recording session as we put together... Uh, this week's worth of videos, and uh, we are very much in appreciation for the King Cave Rebirths who are supporting the channel. Ultimately, though, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. Before you is a sample of our bibliography to date, but we are working all the time. And coming October 18th is the Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus. You guys have been watching this comic kind of develop over the this past year of 2023 and it is almost upon us and about 75 percent of this print run is accounted for already which i have to absolutely thank you guys for uh what that also suggests is if if you even think that you want this you better order it up quick because uh, that last 25 percent is going to go pretty quick whenever uh you know stores sell stuff off the rack and then have to re-up 500 plus pages 150 page of additional material and uh Best book I ever made. Please scoop that up. Not the only holiday effort to come in 2023. Uh, in November comes the X-Men Grand Design Trilogy trade paperback. Uh, it's crazy how uh, this one works because it's probably off to the press right now, mere weeks before its release, so I don't have a comp copy to show off. So it's going to be smaller in scale than what you're, lo you're looking at, but these big volumes, some of them are out of print, and it's going to have all of my X-Men Grand Design work in there. Please check that out, man. It's perfect. Jump on point for any X-Men fans or, or uh, you know, enterprising X-Men fans if you're curious about that title. Red Room has been my focus uh, the past couple of years in terms of new comics. Two trade paperbacks out. The Antisocial Network. Trigger Warnings. Uh, it's Halloween time, right? Read some uh, tongue-in-cheek horror pot boilers. There's going to be a third volume coming out in January. It's called Crypto Killers. And uh, it is the best round of comics uh, yet. Each one of these is self-contained, though. It has four complete uh, self-contained stories. If you see either of these out there in the wild, give it a shot. Jimmy, tell the people what you got going on. 
Hulk Grand Design is my contribution to the Grand Design mythos and it is sold out at the distribution level. So pick that up if it's sitting on your comic shop shelves right now because these are gonna become harder and harder to find. Coming out in November, Street Angel Princess of Poverty from Image Comics. You need to pre-order that one now. It collects all of the Street Angel comics that are not in Deadliest Girl Alive, also available from Image Comics. These two books together will comprise the complete set of all of the Street Angel comics that I have made so far. And I have been self-publishing lately and will be selling these on jimrug.com, my website, at the end of October, October 26th. That will include the BW zine, uh, highlighting panels and art and ads and editorials from the uh, black and white explosion comics of the 80s that I love so much. The 1986 zine is all about the year 1986 whenever comics really kind of, the direct market and comic shops took over the direction of comics in, the, uh, in America. And True Crime Funnies, these are nonfiction stories uh, featuring traditional true crime subject matter like a uh, drug cop, but also featuring some wrestling stories uh, from the early 20th century, as well as an Andy Warhol soiree into wrestling one night. So check those out. Mark your calendar, October 26th, jimrug.com. And if you can't wait that long, you can read a lot of this stuff on my Patreon, patreon.com slash jimrug. The books are the most important part to keep the channel uh, solvent and to keep the videos coming to you on a regular basis, but there are some ways to directly support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Jimmy, let the people know. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. It's a way for us to keep you up to date on what we have going on and where we're going to be. You can also pick up Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, mugs, hats, stickers, all kinds of stuff at our spread shop, and that link is also under this video in the show notes. There you have it. Plethora of ways to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Jimmy, please give the people their final marching orders and we'll be on our way. Read more comics.